hello everyone you know back in the day when I was growing up we had lots of uh, companies that produced kits you know with Heath kit being one of the biggest in the electronics ham radio field and uh, you know a lot of people love to build those Heath kits well back then you know that was a little bit out of my price range being uh, growing up on a farm so you know we got other stuff like ICO and um, some kits from Radio Shack and built those you know and then a lot of times we would scratch build stuff from old magazines you know using uh, old uh, black and white TV components transformers tubes and so forth so it was really fun back then and you know building kits really it's probably what set me off on learning electronics and uh, you know you could spend hours putting stuff together and tinkering with it and getting it working and it was very very satisfying to do and you know again you learn a lot uh, you get to practice your soldering skills and uh, learn about how the circuits work as you put them together a lot of those uh, old kits was very in-depth on theory on how it worked and so forth but you know we don't have a lot of that today uh, we do have some little basic uh, electronic kits well uh, icstation.com contacted me and you guys know that I have gotten away from a lot of reviews uh, mostly because uh, I don't like companies telling me what I can and cannot put on YouTube um, and that's why I have stayed away from sponsorships and, and so forth because so many of them companies out there today want you to do it their way well that's not what my channel is about my channel is about what I want to do and what uh, I can pass on to other people that wants to learn um, in fact I've recently had a company that contacted me and wanted me review a piece of equipment and I would love to have that piece of equipment uh, I think it's a very nice piece of equipment with what I could do with it but and they come back and told me that they wanted me to produce the video unlisted give them the link and let them look at it and then they will come back and approve it well no that's not how it works uh, if I'm gonna do a review I'm gonna do a review on something I'm gonna give my honest opinion about the uh, whatever I'm reviewing and that's just the way it's gonna be uh, no one's gonna tell me what I can do and cannot do on uh, YouTube not on my channel just ain't gonna happen but anyway, IC Station sent me a few kits here, and uh, get them out, take a look at them, and we'll set them up here. Now they sent these to me free of charge, just for doing a review and hey who doesn't like kits I love putting kits together and uh, you know no ways affiliated with this company or anything they just uh, had the goodness of their heart sent me a few things to uh, review and what we're going to look at today is this FM radio clock kit and uh, we're going to put this together we also got an FM transmitter kit and this is an Arduino based um, radio and uh, I don't know if you can see it but it's got a little antenna in there it's just a module it's not a kit it's already put together but you have to interface it to your Arduino to uh, get it to work and um, I have the big you know full-blown uno kit but this is uses a little Arduino module um, I probably could get it to work with uh, 
the kit I have, but I think I'm going to order that little Arduino module so I can uh, put it all together and get it set up just like they show on that website. So uh, these two kits here, um, this is a very simple one here, so we'll uh, save them for another video. Probably do both of them together in one video. But today we're going to uh, concentrate on this FM radio clock kit. And for my C station, this is the GY19367. I think it's basically the same kit that uh, Banggood sells. But uh, we'll check it out and see. see we've got some tape holding the uh, covers together. Get all of that off. It does come with a uh, paper. Now you can go online uh, to icstation.com and they have the instructions on how to put it together. And they also send uh, a lot more information than what they have here and on the web page in the PDF if you ask for it. But we basically got a block diagram slash schematic. And, uh, back side of the uh, PCB and the front side of the PCB okay we can see IC1 is a CD 2003 GP and that's basically the whole radio itself it's this one IC chip um, and then just the uh, components around it you know for tuning and speaker and uh, power supply and stuff to run it with so, uh, you say this this one I see is basically the uh, whole complete radio. All right, we'll lift the cover off. See our buttons here. We'll just lay them back in the cover. We have a speaker. That's probably our tuning knob. The front LCD display is already populated. I don't think there's very little you have to do that other than put the uh, little push button disc on. And uh, you can see there's the IC for this. Very little IC. Um, it's populated on a little small circuit board. That's just soldered onto the uh, main board. We have a LCD, little crystal coupler capacitors on the back. The antenna, a bag full of components, and our circuit board. And then there's the uh, back of the case with a built in. Double A battery holder. All right, I'm gonna get all the uh, parts out of the bag and get all of them laid out. Then we can see just exactly what we have here. Okay, so I got all the components kind of sorted out. I got all the ceramics and one, the transistors, the ICs, the electrolytics, our coils. These are basically tuning capacitors, switches, and jacks. And all the miscellaneous hardwire here. Um, I went ahead and laid out all the resistors. And you know these multi-band resistors are hard to to read sometimes. They're just hard to see. So it kind of helps to just take your own meter and verify each one and lay them out. You know, on a piece of paper with the values beside it makes it a whole lot easier to search through it. So I think uh, the first thing we're going to do is start with putting in the uh, resistors. Okay, sorry about the uh, glare, but you know I got a bit of seat, so I got the headlight on it. So we're going to start off with the uh, 10 ohm resistors, 
and that's two of them. And we'll just uh, bend the leads. And insert them into the holes. Bend the leads over on the other side. So that was R7. This is R8, which is our 10 ohm. Then we'll go with the 100 ohm, and that'll be R1, so 100 ohm resistor. Then we'll go to the 330 ohm. There's two of them, so we got R10, and I think the other one is R4. And we got uh, 560 ohms. That's going to be one of those. And that will be R2. Then we have 10K. K should be three of those. So we have all five. R six. And R nine. And the last is going to be the 150K, which is only one of those. And that will be all three. And we should be able to turn the board right over. and solder all those up. Okay, we'll go ahead and get all of these soldered up.
doing this make sure you don't get no bridges over onto your other pads okay well that looks good solder joints so that's 10 resistors and when you count those they always should be even numbers if you come up with one that's uneven you need to uh, go to the other side and look <laughs> you might have not got it in the hole or uh, something horrible went wrong okay now it's time to move on to capacitors and if you notice there's uh, extra resistors left over, don't let that bother you. There's always extra parts in these kits. Okay, so just like the resistors, I laid all the uh, ceramic capacitors out by value. So we can go ahead and start on that now. And the first one, which is two peak of air, and it's supposed to be one. So we'll grab one. And we can see C10 is a two peak of air. Thirty picofarad, but there be four of them. C four. C three. And there should be one more in C6. Now we'll go to the 82 peak of Farad. Should be one of those. That's going to be C7. So we'll go to the 202s. And only one of those are used. C14 Alright now 472 There's two of those so That'll be C12 C11 and the last is the uh, 104s and there's actually five of these in circuit so we've got 
of them. C8. That's four of them. And C9. That'll be five of them. Okay, so that's all the uh, ceramic jobs in. And as you look on the uh, paper, we still got one of each value left. So that's just extra parts for uh, other projects. Okay. And we'll get this turned around. I'll go ahead and uh, solder all these up. No need to waste your time watching me do that. All right, now we'll go ahead and get the uh, electrolytics installed. We got some uh, 470s, and make sure you note the uh, polarity, and it's right on the board. Also, all right, so there's one 470. And I'm checking the uh, capacitor to make sure they are 470s. Okay, so there's one 470. And then we have a 10UF. Go back and make sure that uh, all the polarities are right. And then I'll turn them over and sort it out in. Okay, so we got a couple little ceramic filters that we'll put in. We got CF1. Okay, I'll go ahead and get those soldered in. All right, we've got two transistors here, Q1 and Q2. Q1 is a 9018. Silk screen on the board. Now if you have a little hard time, let's see, C2 is a uh, 8550. If you have a hard time trying to get all three, um, pins in the hole uh, what you can do is come back and uh, trim off the lead so that each lead gets shorter and shorter as it goes towards the uh, pin that way 
we just drop it down one lead falls in the other lead and the last lead and that makes it a little easier to uh, put them in installed All right, we got three coils here that's got to be installed there's no value listed and you see that's three two of them are just alike one of them smaller so we got L1 L2 and L3 L1 is five and a half turns, L2 is six and a half turns, and L3 is six and a half turns. Okay, we got L1, L2, and L3 in place. So, uh, now I'm going to hit and got soldered in. So, uh, now it's time, what we're going to do is go ahead and start installing the uh, switches and uh, earphone jack so we got a uh, push button switch here Sort of that in. Okay, we got our push button switch in. And the next component we're going to install is this uh, earphone jack. And that's going to go right over here on this side. this down on the uh, desk and solder that in place okay so now we'll go ahead and uh, install this volume control Okay, the volume control is in. And what we install now is the uh, tuning capacitor. And if you look here, we got two tabs here, one small and one wider, and the board is also cut out for that.
Alright, so I'll go ahead and get this installed. So as you can see, the only thing we have left as far as components is the um, two IC chips. Now I know most of the time when you are uh, building the board, you put the lowest components in first, like the resistors, the uh, ceramic capacitors, then maybe the IC chips. And that way, you, you know, the board lays flat on the surface so you can put them in, you know, and they'll stay. But the reason why I didn't do that is because IC1 is a CMOS device and we don't want to handle the board just that much you know to keep from uh, damaging that CMOS device with uh, ESD so that's why I haven't put those in yet but we have uh, these little dome metal bits here that actually go on the uh, display board for the buttons so we got to put those on I have the uh, button for the power let me go ahead and slide that on and uh, antenna lead clip screws and the uh, battery so I think what we're going to do now is go ahead and put the uh, wiring into the uh, board and we'll be connecting to B plus B minus then there's a ribbon cable that'll go from this board it's uh, five wires to the display board and then the uh, speaker one and speaker two wires okay so uh, I see two so TDA 2822 and that's a uh, audio amplifier we'll go ahead and get that one in notch facing the uh, silk screen on the board so I'll go ahead and get that soldered in When you're sorting these high seeds in, uh, take note that these pins are kind of close, so try not to make no solder bridges. And then the last one is going to be I C1. And I'll go ahead and get that installed and uh, get that soldered in place. Okay, so our last wire that's going to be connected it's going to get a little spade connector on the end it's going to get a little ring terminal on one end and uh, it's going to connect to this little dot that says antenna Okay, internal wire is connected, and uh, all I got to do now is clean the flux off the board, and uh, we go ahead and start installing this and connecting all the wires, and uh, see if this thing's going to work. All right, so we're going to connect up our antenna, and this wire. just want to lay in here like so and then this piece this little flange on the antenna and push it just in doesn't go in as easy as I thought it would there we go now we just need to get this back behind it
Yep. So that goes in there like so. Want a bit closer view for you. And then we just put this machine screw through the case, through the ring terminal, and right into the uh, base of the antenna. Okay, now that we got this together, got the antenna connected up, we got to get the speaker in and the uh, display. And I had to take this little push button off the switch. Uh, some of these radios I've seen that it has a push button. So it goes all the way out through to the power. This one actually has a, uh, a plastic push button. So you don't have to use this piece. So the next thing is we got these little circuit tracers here with those little metal discs go in and that's the uh, push buttons so we got to get those on and you can solder those on but I don't recommend it because most of the time you'll um, you'll mess up we'll try one of them and see we got six of them and we only got four push buttons so if we mess one up we'll be okay So, trying to solder them in is next to uh, impossible. I tried plugs and everything and the solder just will not stick to these little things and I don't want to overheat them and deform them so what I've done is placed them all in a row and I'm going to just run some scotch tape over it to hold them down. That should be okay for this. Um, in fact, one of them, it took off, and I don't know where it went to. It's uh, long gone, cannot be found. <laughs> so I'm going to just uh, bridge a little bit of scotch tape across it, and that should hold it okay. Okay, the uh, scotch tape works fine. Just put in a little L configuration here. All four buttons are, appear to be working, so there shouldn't be any problem. So I uh, really saw nothing that holds the speaker in other than uh, the circuit board here, and I didn't want it. that to be only because it's actually about three sixteenths of an inch away from the speaker. The speaker would rattle, so I just put some uh, tape on there for right now. After it's uh, testing everything, I'll probably open it back up and put a little hot glue on each side just to hold it in place. What I want to do now is go ahead and uh, join these two boards together. And that's just by putting the wires through the holes and soldering them in place. So no big, uh, big thing on that. So I'll go ahead and get that done and then we'll mount the glue. Okay, that's connected, so we should be able to go ahead and bolt this little board in place. Okay, so that board's mounted in. I'm going to go ahead and check these buttons. They all seem to be working. Now we can go ahead and uh, connect the speaker wires up. 
and bolt that board in place. And just for a warning, um, be very careful with the uh, amount of heat that you put on components, especially like this tuning cap. You don't want to uh, put too much heat on it. I mean, you know, put it on, solder it, and get off of it. Don't play around with it. solder on this here. Now I can stick the wire through the hole. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get a circuit board installed. I just connected the antenna wire earlier just to keep it out of the way for right now. Now we need to hook up the battery and sense have it open up like this our negative on this side and a positive on this side so we'll put the negative clip over here and we'll mount the uh, positive clip on this side Okay, I'm going to these up a little bit. Connect the antenna wire. Alright, we should be able to just button this thing up. put the uh, one screw in it so actually the two bottom screws for the display board you have to take them out and they go in through the uh, case and that helps hold the case together and then we got another screw that's long that goes through here Power switch feels a little wonky. Let's get some uh, batteries in it, try it out. Okay, all buttoned up. Got the battery door off. It's got some uh, cheap dollar store batteries. Nothing fancy. I think this radio is like 11 bucks at IC station. Go ahead and stick the batteries in it. Hey, and look, we got clock. The clock is running. Now let's see if this power button's going to work. Yeah. Volume's wide open. 
not hearing anybody. Oh, the antenna, I'll hear some static. There you go. Um, little cheap FM receiver. Um, 74 to 108. This one actually goes uh, down to 71 to 115.5. And I'm sure it probably could use some uh, alignment of the oscillator and stuff. But hey, you know, for what it is, and fun building, um, you know, it is what it is. So you can't beat that. what it's supposed to do so uh, I'll have to read the instructions to figure out how to set the alarm on this alarm is set for seven o'clock and it doesn't have a buzz or nothing in it, it actually it'll come on and start playing whatever radio station you last had it tuned to okay and this display does not go out when you turn it off it automatically switches to the clock and running on three volts it should last a right good while So it's uh, icstation.com and this is the link to the uh, radio kit. And you can see uh, price is $11.19. I'll leave a link below to this particular kit and a link to uh, the main site. got all kinds of uh, different stuff if you want to uh, check them out lots of little kits and stuff that you can get um, sensor modules, power modules, do-it-yourself modules I see station branded smart robots they even have uh, components if you want to uh, check them out the links will be below well there you go guys simple little 
FM radio kit from icstation.com and again I'll leave the links down below if you like to uh, check one of these out like I say kit building is always fun and uh, enjoyable to sit down and do and this one was pretty much a breeze uh, you know just kind of got to figure out stuff as you go along on it not unless you get the uh, PDF and you, again you'll have to uh, ask for that to be able to get that but yeah very simple and in the next few days we'll uh, throw this little kit together like I say I need to order the uh, little small Arduino board for this one so we can get that going and this is basically a, uh, a radio FM radio by itself and it uses the uh, Arduino so that can be a little bit fun but we'll find out how this uh, little FM transmitter works it's always good to have a FM transmitter laying around for um, you know checking things out and this and that and maybe one day we'll build a uh, little AM radio transmitter from scratch that's uh, you know, just for testing purposes um, we're still working on the uh, three band AM uh, radio based on the uh, pine board project we'll be getting back on that before long and uh, a lot of other stuff going on uh, <laughs> I got so many plans and projects for videos now that I only know which one to get started on so anyway leave your comments down below I'd like to hear from you as always and uh, hear your thoughts and stuff on these uh, little FM kit and uh, we'll see y'all in the next video bye now